Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to our final overtime video for the book of Leviticus. This is the last time we're doing this, but I do want to just start off uh, by saying that if you do have any questions uh, over the next two Sundays of anything that's covered in our series through Leviticus or any questions of anything we've talked about in the past, uh, you can send those questions in to the number or email that's on the screen here, and either I'll answer those uh, directly or um, possibly even do an Ask Pastor Chase video uh, if it's something that might be beneficial for, for everyone to hear. So, uh, don't stop sending in the questions. Um, but for this video, I really just wanted to focus on, on two aspects of the book of Leviticus. Uh, number one, uh, just looking at where the Trinity is seen in the book of Leviticus. And that's because by the time this video is coming out, it'll be the day before St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick, uh, being uh, the man who hundreds of years ago uh, was uh, an, a missionary and evangelist to uh, Ireland. Uh, he himself was actually Scottish, um, but he was captured and, uh, by the Irish. And while he was in captivity, he noticed a lot of the spiritual uh, rituals that the Irish people had. And he devoted his life to when he was freed, going back uh, as a missionary to the people of Ireland. And actually, I have right here a plant. Uh, with a bunch of clovers, three-leaf clovers. Um, and St. Patrick actually used the clover as a way to talk about the Trinity, right? He would, he would uh, pick up a three-leaf clover in Ireland and show people this is what it's like, how God is three in one. You see three leaves, um, but it's one plant, and God is three, but he's also one. And while it's not the perfect illustration, uh, it's an illustration that he used to talk about God. And that's why uh, we see St. Patrick's Day affiliated with the three-leaf clover and all the clovers all over the place. And so uh, just thinking about that, it made me think about where is the Trinity seen in the book of Leviticus? Right? The word Trinity is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible, but we see all three persons of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit all throughout uh, the whole Bible and even in the Old Testament. And so in the book of Leviticus, we see God the Father all the time, right? Because he's actually talking. He's talking to Moses and, and many of these words, actually the majority of the words in the book of Leviticus are straight from God himself. Um, and so uh, we see God the Father present. And then we've said, especially at the beginning of the book, but the entire book of Leviticus uh, is pointing straight towards Jesus. And so we're, we've looked at uh, like with the grain offering and, and the burnt offering and how those were vivid pictures uh, of what would ultimately be only be fulfilled by Jesus uh, when he came. And so we see God the Father, God the Son, but it's a little more tricky to find the Holy Spirit, but he's also present throughout the book of Leviticus. Let me just give a, a couple instances. Uh, number one, we talked about the tabernacle uh, several weeks ago. And in the tabernacle, uh, one, one uh, aspect of that was that there was supposed to be a fire that was burning continuously. Uh, and that itself is almost a picture of uh, what's spiritual about the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Right? It was a tangible, physical fire in the tabernacle that burned uh, without ceasing. I think I mentioned uh, that that's kind of like how uh, the Olympic torch is supposed to be, right? The fire just goes on nonstop. Um, but in the Holy Spirit, or in, in the New Testament, we have this, this metaphorical fire that is the Holy Spirit that's burning in us constantly when we're saved. Uh, also, in Leviticus, when the tabernacle was finished and, and consecrated to God, uh, you saw fire fall down from heaven uh, in the same way uh, that we see the Holy Spirit. When he shows up in the book of Acts, um, uh, he, he falls down upon the believers and is instantly able to start working through them, and, and like 3,000 people are saved even on that first day. Uh, so those are just a couple of instances. There's other places like the oil with some of the uh, sacrifices, uh, but I think those are the, the two with fire are the most vivid pictures of the Holy Spirit, uh, foreshadowing him uh, for how he'll act and be in the New Testament. So uh, the, the only other thing I want to talk about in this video here is about Leviticus chapter 17. And I think it's tied actually straight to the book of Romans chapter 3. Uh, we spent most of this past weekend, if you didn't get to see that service, focusing on uh, the Levitical laws about sexuality in Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20, and how those uh, two chapters, which are kind of hard for us to work through in, in 2022, um, actually centered right in the middle of those is Leviticus 19, which is all about loving your neighbor. That's how that chapter ends. And so it's remarkable that these two difficult chapters surround this amazing verse that Jesus quotes all the time, to love your neighbors. But we didn't really get to talk about Leviticus chapter 17. And so I just wanted to quickly mention just a couple things. Um, the, the first part of the chapter is about sacrifice and, and different uh, more rules and regulations for, for sacrifices. 
But uh, the last six verses are specifically laws against eating blood. Now, this is a little kind of weird for us to talk about today because uh, we in our culture don't uh, eat a lot of blood. We don't, that's just not something we do. Uh, but the cultures that surround the Israelites at this time, uh, they would drink blood, which I know is disgusting to even talk about. Um, but they would think that they could get benefits from certain animals by drinking their blood. So if they wanted to, you know, hop really high like a rabbit, then they would drink rabbit's blood. Or they wanted to run really fast like a deer or something like that, then they would drink the deer blood. And that's what they thought that they would do and that they could absorb a certain quality of an animal by drinking its blood. Uh, but, but God specifically tells his people not to do that at all. Verse 14 says, for the life of every creature is its blood. Its blood is its life. And so God is telling them, hey, this is, this is sacred. Blood, like this isn't something that you should be consuming. Uh, and so he tells his people specifically that here. In the book of Acts, uh, that command is actually repeated um, where the New Testament believers are told to uh, stay away from um, to, to stay away from sexual immorality and not to, not to drink blood. And so uh, th- that command is actually repeated in the New Testament. But uh, I wanted to kind of focus on the book of Romans because one of the things, one of the objections specifically about the Old Testament, but also about the whole Bible, is that this just seems to be a very bloody book. Right. That's people say, why, why is Christianity such a, a, a religion that's focused on blood? Even some of the songs we sing, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus or we're redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And, and the language about the blood is slowly wanting to be removed from Christianity because it's seen as archaic. Uh, but not just in the book of Leviticus, but also the book of Romans reminds us sacrifice and a blood sacrifice specifically is crucial and it's a central aspect to the Christian faith. And so let me go to Romans chapter 3. We read a little bit from it on Sunday. Uh, But Romans chapter 3, we read from the message translation on Sunday, but I'm going to read from the English Standard Version here. It says, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and prophets bear bear witness to it. What does that mean? It means that uh, God has made himself known apart from the law that was given to Moses, although the law of Moses pointed directly to how God has made himself known in the New Testament. Verse 22, The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as propitiation by his blood. That word propitiation means to to satisfy the wrath of God. And so what this chapter is, is telling us is that the only way that God's anger towards sinful mankind could be satisfied is through blood. And so the blood uh, that appeases God's wrath once and for all, or the theological word propitiates God's wrath, is the blood of Jesus. And so what we see all throughout the Old Testament, starting all the way back in the garden, right, when humanity sinned and God had to make, uh, had to kill an animal to provide them uh, clothes to wear, uh, anytime there's sin, that sin has to be paid for by death, and death involves the shedding of blood. And so in the Old Testament, this happened over and over again through the sacrifices, and in the New Testament, it was the blood of Jesus uh, that took away the sins of the people. The reason I mention this is because there's, there's again, a growing uh, uh, belief um, that's called, let me pull this up here, it's called... Uh, the doctrine of a wrathless cross, the doctrine of a a wrathless cross. And what this is, is when we say we don't want to talk about the blood, we don't want to talk about God's wrath at all, let's just focus on God's love. Uh, But the truth of the matter is God's love was made manifest through the propitiation of sin, namely sacrificing his son uh, so that his wrath didn't have to be directed towards us. So we can't have the love of God without the wrath of God. And so it's so important for us to understand why we see blood coming up all the time in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and we can't have our Christian faith without it. So I hope that uh, gives a little bit of insight, not just into Leviticus chapter 17, uh, but why this book is such a bloody book and why Christianity is such a religion that's focused on blood. 
Well, we have two more uh, Sunday services coming up this week. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, the prophetic calendar as it's seen in the book of Leviticus and a fun uh, little just thing about how the Israelites would go camping all the time. And I think that's uh, this, this weekend will be just a fun service and then we'll wrap up the series on Leviticus uh, next Sunday. So thanks for watching these over, overtime videos. Thanks for uh, just for those of you who wanted to go a little bit deeper in the study through Leviticus. And again, if you have any questions at all, I still want to answer those. So don't hesitate to send those. In. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day.